Students, let us verify the third law and the final law of static friction. It says that the force of static friction is dependent on the nature of two surfaces in contact, two bodies sliding one over the another. So if the surface is smooth, then the friction will be less and if the surface is rough relative to one another, then more friction is produced and therefore you have to, the driving force accordingly has to be more in order to create a motion. So we'll take one thing. As usual, we'll consider a, the experimental setup that we have a Now this time I will consider I will take uh, two different blocks. The surface of the table is same, but I will consider two different blocks. One block is this uh, in black in color, another block is kept somewhere here, and I will also take that. Here, suppose this is uh, rough, and this is suppose that it is a uh, little uh, smooth. Okay, it is smooth and this is, it is found that I will do the experiment to, to, so that the motion is created and it is found that if I keep on adding the mass at a particular force, say F1, the block starts sliding and the friction that is produced is suppose Fs1, here in this case obviously the normal direction is uh, N1, the weight is W1, so I find that this uh, FS1, if I want to find, it is find uh, that this FS1, which is equal to F1, in this case only I am interested in FS1, and obviously I will uh, make this uh, value constant because uh, the normal reaction should remain the same, so I will not uh, change the uh, weight of the block because that will influence the normal reaction so basically i will uh, take the same block but the uh, one is uh, whose surface is slightly smooth and the uh, other one having uh, rough surfaces so the weight is not going to change in this case also the weight will be w1 and the normal reaction will be n1 there is nothing nothing going to change over there only the roughness and the smoothness of the surface so in this first case, it is found that the Fs1 is F1 and in the second time, I will place this block, the blue one, in the table and repeat the experiment and it is found, surprisingly, these two forces responsible for the motion of each of the block, <laughs> each of the block is not same. That means, this block is pulled by F1 force. Pulled means, when its motion just starts, just when its motion just starts or begins, the block starts to slide, just starts its motion. That's just what is very, very important because if suppose that it is uh, start its motion at 10 Newton force, not 9.5, 9.8, only at 10 Newton force, though obviously if I apply 20 Newton force, the block will start sliding also. So, we are interested in the minimum amount of force which is responsible for this motion. Because more than that also is responsible. But then what force we are talking about? We are talking about the force, minimum force at which the motion starts. That minimum force is equal to the limiting frictional value. Because that limiting friction is equal to the weight of the block or the force that is pulling this. If I decrease this force, force less than this, the friction will be less than that and then we cannot find that uh, uh, limiting value. So, for to find, to, to find the limiting value, we 
have to do the experiment carefully and add masses here in steps slowly and slowly each time you add some mass tap the board to see if the motion is happening or not happening so this is the force where this motion start and this for this smooth block this f1 which is equal to fs1 is noted in the second case when this is placed so i write when this is placed over here the frictional force produced here is fs2 and the force at which the motion starts is supposing that this force is suppose f2 so again because at this force this motion of this block the starts so therefore i write fs2 is equal to f2 the same thing is conducted with two blocks having same weight providing same normal direction normal direction is not going to change only thing that is changing is the the roughness and smoothness of the surface so the first case this is smooth and the second case is rough so our common sense says that this frictional force will be more than this frictional force because the surface is smooth the friction provided will be less this will be more and exactly it is found to be so this f1 and this f2 when we see that at what force this block was sliding in this case and at what force this block is was sliding and in this case it is found that this f2 is greater than f1 because of the roughness and smoothness of the surface so from here we come to the conclusion because this is for uh, a rough block and this is this was the for uh, smooth block so our conclusion is found that what is the conclusion more the roughness more the force of static friction So this law justifies, this demonstration justifies the third law that uh, the force of static friction depends on nature of surfaces in contact. So this justifies the third law. Okay. Thank you.